I score baseball is the easiest, most intuitive way to score a baseball game. You don't have to understand the complexities of a scorebook or memorize the symbols for each type of play. I score baseball will guide you with a simple interview format. Let's begin by examining the various features of I score. Most people will begin in the team manager. The team manager is where you can create your teams even before you get to the ballpark. To start, let's add a team called the Bulldogs. The manager's name is Jamie. Next, we can go to the roster and begin to add players. When you add a player to the roster, you can choose an existing player from the player list or create a new player. Since our player list is currently empty, we will create a new player. Let's add Alex. His number is 42. He bats and throws left-handed. He normally plays first base at the start of the game and he will be a starting batter. Setting up this information now will save time when you create a game on game day. Now we can add another player, Josh. His number is 9 and his starting position is right field. You can see now that we are beginning to build up a list of players in our player list. This means that you will only have to add a person once, and from then on you can reuse him on any team you like. You'll notice that the players in the player list don't have numbers or positions. Those get added when you add the player to a team. As long as you use players from the player list, all the stats for a player will be linked to him regardless of the team he plays for. You may also delete a player by clicking on the Edit button and clicking Delete. But be careful, deleting a player will mean you will no longer be able to view his lifetime stats. Let's finish adding players to our roster. Okay, we have added all our players and we have added a second team and filled in its roster. You'll notice that the teams can be deleted here. Again, be careful, once a team is deleted it can't be retrieved. Now that we have two teams, we are ready to score a game. Since we don't have any existing games in the list, we will create a new game. In the New Games screen, if we hadn't already created our teams in Team Manager, we could click New Team and add a new team now, but it's easier to add them in Team Manager if you can. Since we have already created our teams, let's just select them. We'll make the Bulldogs the home team and the Twins the visitor team. You'll notice that it names our game with the game date and the teams. Now we have our game and we're ready to continue. Before the game begins, we want to set up our lineup. You can see that iScore used the players in our roster to fill out the lineup for us. It will bring the players in in the same order and with the same fielding and batting information as the roster. As you can see, the more information you supply to the team manager, the easier it is to create a lineup at game time. Notice that we can change the order of the batters by simply dragging the batters around. Also, before the game starts, we can swap the teams in case we accidentally put the home lineup in the visitors section. Once your lineup is set, it's time to play ball. Now comes the fun part. This is where a majority of your time will be spent. If you hadn't set the fielding positions of the home team in the lineup, you can do that now. Simply click the position and choose a player for that position. Keep doing that until all positions are correct. Click close when you are finished. Now when the umpire says play, click play. The game start time is recorded when you press play. You'll see that the first player on the visitor team is up to bat. The info on the left shows that he is the first batter in the lineup and his jersey number is 4. You will also see the home team pitcher on the right with his pitch count of balls, strikes, and total pitches. Tracking the game is done with the five buttons below. Ball, strike, foul, out, and in play. Ball, strike, and foul are self-explanatory. Simply click them when the umpire makes his call. Click out if the batter's actions resulted in him being out before reaching first base. After clicking out, you will be shown a list of reasons why the batter was out. Let's say the batter grounded out to the shortstop who threw it to first. With the out button at the top highlighted, click ground out. Now iScore will ask you where the ball was hit. 
Hold your finger down and drag to where the ball was hit. An animation shows the ball's path. Now we are going to tap the fielders that were involved in making the out in the order they touched the ball. Six, three. If we made a mistake, we can hit undo and try again. When it's correct, press done. And that's it. We just recorded the first out. In play means the batter made it safely to at least first. Again, you will see a list of reasons why the batter was safe. In this case, let's click hit single. Again, you will be asked to mark the ball. Now the next step may be confusing at first. It asks what happened to the batter. Well, we just said he got a single. In a majority of cases, you will just click held up, meaning he didn't advance any further. Sometimes a player who hits a single can get to second or third if a fielder makes an error after the batter makes it to first on a legitimate single, or if a fielder is trying for another play. Say for instance there's a man on second, and when the batter hits the single, the man on second tries for home. The batter who made it to first will typically advance if the fielders throw home. In that case, on this screen, you would mark safe at second, advanced by batter. For this play, we will mark held up. Now we see the batter on first and a new batter at the plate. Now that there is a runner on base, in addition to marking the batter, we can advance the runner. Say the pitcher throws a wild pitch. We'll mark the pitch as a ball, then click on the runner on first. It asks us what happened, and we will say safe at second, wild pitch. We can also mark stolen base, pass ball, or whatever is appropriate. And those are the basics of scoring a baseball game with iScore. Before I finish with this screen, I want to show you how to score a double play, since it may not be immediately obvious. If the batter hits into a 6-4-3 double play, for example, click out for the batter, click on ground out, the ball's location, and each position, 6-4-3. It will then ask what happened to the base runners, and here's where you will click out in a double play. Full undo and redo are available so you never have to worry about making a mistake. In the options screen you can set the number of expected innings and you can view the statistics of the game at any time. After the game you may want to email the stats to yourself or to a friend. Just click email and type in their email address. You will of course need to have network access to use this feature. We've given you a lot of information, but once you get started, you'll see how user-friendly this program is. Whether you're a coach, a parent, or any baseball fan, you'll have fun keeping track of your team's stats. Thank you for using iScore Baseball.